Oh, hello. Welcome back to another video, another online discussion. And today, what we're going to discuss now is your quality assurance, instrumentation, and laboratory entrepreneurship. So just want to welcome everyone back to our discussion. So big shout out to my students from 2MT04 and 2MT05. So formerly today we will be starting our discussion for the semi-final period for your quality assurance, instrumentation, and laboratory entrepreneurship. Oh, diba? Both the, um, the bears are very excited. I hope everyone is very excited too. So let's dig in. So... This morning, okay, we will be discussing quality assurance and instrumentation in laboratory entrepreneurship. So, let's dig into the, our new topic for this morning, okay? So, previously, we had discussed the quality, quality control in the different parts and different clinical sections of your laboratory. So, today, what we're going to discuss is the... Um, what we're going to discuss is the quality control in hematology and, of course, in the clinical chemistry. So, let's dig in. So, the first thing is for your clinical chemistry. But before we dig into that, let me first describe to you or let me first define to you what is clinical chemistry. So, clinical chemistry is the course that deals with the quantitative measurement of biochemical substances found in the body fluids essentially in the blood. Okay, so technically when we're talking about biochemical substances, these are your glucose, your carbohydrates, your lipids, your proteins, and many, many more like your creatinine, your BUN, your uric acid. So all of those things we are measuring in the body fluid, essentially in your, in your blood, in your serum. Although in some cases in clinical chemistry, we are also measuring the amount of biochemical substances in your urine, in your amniotic fluid, in your serous fluid, in your pleural fluid, your pericardial fluid, your peritoneal fluid, and even in your cerebrospinal fluid. So moving on now, so this involves the knowledge and understanding the basic concept and principles of their metabolism, laboratory analysis, and pathophysiology, which you will be discussing when you reach your third year. So that's one semester away. So and aside from that, quality assurance and laboratory safety are given due emphasis. So as you can see, we have an entire semester and entire subject to discuss the quality assurance of the different clinical labor clinical laboratory sections that we have so by the end the students are expected to demonstrate the knowledge and principles learned from this course so this is actually the last part of our quality control um, series if i may say because after this, we will now jump to the analytical instrumentation that we have both in clinical chemistry, similar to your immunology, and all other sections as well. But let us first finish your clinical chemistry. So in the clinical chemistry, uh, a quick, quick run through of what we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss the general guidelines and the internal quality and external quality control, which we already finished because the internal quality control and external quality control is the same in every clinical section. So it encompasses all other sections, be it hematology, microbiology, all are actually the same. So going back now, we will also be discussing the use of standard uh, standard solutions and control solutions. If, we're, if you're if you can still remember, we describe your standard solution as the same with your calibrator and your calibration standard. So all are the same. And aside from that, we will also be doing your control solution. So we discuss the ideal characteristic of your quality control material. So at the end, before we also proceed to other parts of our discussion for this morning, I will also be showing you some videos so that you will be having a better understanding on how it is being done in the laboratory but before we jump into that let me first um, remind you again of what quality control is all about so again quality control is one component of quality assurance system okay so i hope you still remember that and it is a part of the performance monitoring that occurs 
after a test has been established. So it is very important for us to always do your quality control and I will never get tired reminding you of that because it is very important. So when we were discussing quality control, we discussed that there are actually two types or two kinds of quality control. We have your intralab quality control or your internal quality control and we also have your interlaboratory quality control also known as your external quality control. Later on, I'll be showing you some pictures of the actual samples that we have actually on your right on your screen right now so before you run your sample okay so before you run your sample before you run this sample you the first thing you need to do is of course to always do your qc and the thing that you can see here this black one and the white one this is actually your um this is your quality control material for your daily qc as you can see it is numbered one and two one represents the normal control and the two represent the abnormal control. Again, remember in clinical chemistry, we're only using two level quality control material. As you can see, just similar to what I mentioned in our previous discussion, your quality control material are lyophilized so that it will be more stable for longer period of time. So assuming that it is now reconstituted with water, we will now be doing your quality control processing. So, later on, I'll be showing you a video on an example of on how they are doing the reconstituting of your QC from the entering of your QC, materi your QC material and also for entering or interpreting your QC results. So, aside from that, we also will be discussing the purpose and source of an external or an unknown samples. We all know this now. This is your external quality assurance scheme or system or program. Okay, so on the lower right of your screen, these are actually numbered specimens. So this is actually an example of your quality control material for the EQUAS or the external quality assurance scheme. So as you can see, they are actually numbered. They are actually numbered 1 through 12. So actually, you will be doing the QC, the external QC in chemistry monthly. Okay, so let's dig into our discussion for this morning. So internal quality control is also known as your intralaboratory quality control. Again, what we're trying to do is to compare your QC result from day 1 to day 2 from day 3 to day 4. So technically, what we're trying to, to compare is the quality of the, the quality of your results each and every day. Okay, so it involves analysis of control samples together with the patient's specimen. But I want to, to emphasize that you do your QC first before you run your patient. Okay, so it is done in a daily, um, it is done daily to monitor accuracy and the precision of an analytical method. So you always do this every day depending on the protocol of your laboratory, but most of the time it is actually daily. Okay, so it also detects random and systematic error. So we already discussed random and systematic error. So view your notes, review the types or the sources or the causes of random errors and your systematic errors. Okay, so moving on now, we also have your external quality control. Your external quality control is also known as your interlaboratory quality control. Sir, how do we now differentiate external from internal? In a nutshell, your external quality control involves your proficiency testing. It is very important as well in maintaining long-term accuracy of your method. So what happened during your external quality control is that there is a series of unknown samples that are being sent in your laboratory from the reference laboratory or an authorized program provider. Take for example your CAP or your College of American Pathologists. But in our case here in the Philippines, we're actually doing this um, with our National Reference Laboratory, which is the Lung Center of the Philippines. So the unknown samples must be tested by the laboratories who are regularly performing analysis of patient specimen using the same reagent and the same specimen for the actual patient specimen and the results are to be submitted to the program provider, preferably as soon as every analysis is done. So what we're trying to do here is actually to perform your test Okay, you're, you're going to run your, 
your external QC material the very same manner on how you do your internal and how you process your patient specimen. So what we're trying to assess here is not only the, of course, again, the three main objectives of your of your quality control to uh, to check the stability of your machine, to check the quality of your reagent, and also to assess the competence of your technical staff. So aside from that, the analysis now of your unknown samples should be completed within the usual time as for the routine samples. So technically, if you're releasing your result in a particular time, take for example, when I was working in a laboratory, usually our results will come out the next day. But if it is a an emergency if it is a stat we're actually releasing it in less than two to four hours so that is in our case so it's very important to also release the results in the sa very same manner on how you release the results of your samples of your patient samples so going back now unknown samples should also be treated like the patient specimen to determine the true essence of accuracy so most of the time when we are doing your external quality control, we're actually doing it in the same manner on how we run our samples. Why is it very important to do that? Because if you're trying to do it in a manner or technically we call it in a special manner or a special treatment of sample, we cannot fully assess the accuracy of your system, of your methodologies. So it's very important to do that. So talking about the proficiency testing now. So the results for your proficiency testing must not be shared with other laboratories during the testing period. This is what's happening. Sometimes, like for example, we have laboratory A, laboratory B, laboratory C, and all are enrolled in your external quality control program. So most of the time, there will be, of course, nowadays, medical technologists are actually just friends. So most of the time, we try to compare our results with other laboratories. And then eventually, have you ever felt that when you came out of an exam and everyone else is talking about an answer and your your answer is the so much different so different from the answers of the majority sometimes you try to conform and you try to go with the answer of the majority but instead instead of releasing your own results you try to conform you try to compromise and eventually you realize that among all of those laboratories you are the only one who got it correctly but since you you compromise when it comes to your results all of you are incorrect all of you are errors so it's very important not to compare so comparison studies can be made after the testing cycle and actually i'll be showing you some picture later on on how our national reference laboratory is comparing one results one methodology, one laboratory from the other, okay? So some proficiency testing are not quantitative, but qualitative. But however, in clinical chemistry, what we do is actually quantitative. We actually have a mean and we are comparing how deviated your results are from the mean, okay? So if there are no available proficiency testing program for a certain analyte, it is required to implement a non-proficiency test scheme. So technically, if you have analytes, analytes, again, I hope you still remember what is analyte. Okay, go through your notes. Okay, that's good. Okay, so technically, in our case, the gold standard for clinical laboratory external quality control is your College of American Pathologies. Okay, so... Going back now, your external quality control is actually annual for your for your clinical chemistry. So we do it annually. Annually, I mean, there is always a cycle every year. There is a different cycle every year. So technically, I guess we're on cycle 18 right now. And aside from that, you do it every month. So you have 12 samples and you run it for um, the entire year, one sample at a time. Okay, so ayan, we have the Long Center of the Philippines as the National Reference Laboratory for Biochemistry and we have a monthly running of your external quality material. So this is actually how your quality control, your external quality control material looks like. So as here, okay, let's start on the, uh, the leftmost picture. So you can see this is actually the clinical chemistry monthly program. And this is actually the provider here 
Okay, this is not a paid video. This is from Biorad. So right now, the NRL is partnered with Biorad, which is a very good brand. Actually, most of our QC material are also coming from Biorad. So again, going back, uh, most of our QC material, do the, the our internal QC material, are actually from a third party, um, a third party company, not from your machine, not from your reagent, but a third party machine, a third party company. So as you can see, you can see here, your, your quality assurance as ass assurance services. So this is your Equas. This is your Equas. And this is now the sample na. This is your sample number. So technically, if we're gonna follow, so technically, if you if we started if we started around January, so that is actually sample number one. So this sample nine still is re non not yet reconstituted because this sample will be run will be performed on September. Okay, yes, that's how strict we are when it comes to the running. Not because you have the 12 samples emitted, not because you have the 12 samples, you will be running them on all at the same time. It's not like that. Okay, you run it one sample per month. Okay, remember that one sample a month. If you are gonna run everything in one month, take for example, here's the scenario. If you're gonna run 12 samples in one month, in one running, imagine if there is error or there are random or systematic errors at that time it will now be applied to all of those 12 samples okay so unlike if you're gonna run it every month you're actually not only that does you have your internal quality control but you also have an external quality control to check the performance of your machine of your reagent and again of your technical staff so as you can see here you will be adding 5 ml of your water Okay, and you will be you should store it from two degrees centigrade to eight degrees centigrade. So it's very important when it comes to the storage of your of your of your reagents. And aside from that, I just want you to look at Ayan. We're actually on cycle. Yes, we're actually on cycle. We're on cycle eighteen now, and we have this lot number two one one seven zero nine. So it's very important the lot number again. Remember calibration, the lot changes and re lot number changes rather. So moving on, this is an example of your clinical chemistry program. This is a configuration report, sir. So what do you mean by configuration report? So. Before I dig into that configuration report, I just want you to look at this one. So what we have here now is actually 10 different analytes. So you actually, each laboratory can enroll 10 different analytes. So as you can see here, we're having analyte for your sodium, potassium, and fluoride. And we also have here albumin, your cholesterol, your creatinine, your glucose, your total protein. This one is your BUN your urea nitrogen and your uric acid so it's, um what i want to emphasize here is that uh why am i using this exact um configuration report okay so this is because this is the same machine that we have in our laboratory in our simulated laboratory your biosystem a15 that's also the very same um that's also the very same machine that we have so what is important with the configuration report actually before you enroll in your equas you have to configure your machine first so as you can see here you will be selecting what specific method is your laboratory using does your laboratory use so like for example we have you here your ise every ise direct ise for your electrolyte okay direct ISE for your electrolyte and we also have here different methods used in measuring your albumin we have your here your brom cresol green so we have here cholesterol oxidase so much of these methods I will not be discussing this methods yet because that's that this will be part of your clinical chemistry one okay that's one semester away okay be excited so here mo as you can see Reagent is a dedicated reagent. Sir, what do we mean by dedicated reagent? So technically, this laboratory is using a closed system. Sir, what do you mean by closed system? So the machine is from biosystem. The reagent is also coming from biosystem. 
Okay? So that what that's what you mean by dedicated or a closed system of reagent. Take for example, if your laboratory is using a non-dedicated reagent, you are ordering or you are getting the reagents from a different company other than the provider of your machine. Okay? And it, another thing that's very important here are your units. Okay, so millimoles per liter and grams per deciliter. It's very important for you to report this. So, most of most of these are actually of your your conventional. Okay, this most are your conventional, but not the SI. So, very important for you to report or to indicate your unit as well. Okay, so I'll show you an example of a QC report a sample report already so this is actually coming from this is sample number one okay and they did the running this is july this is july 19 uh, july 29 2019 this is cycle 18 this is sample number one and as you can see it's very good okay no warnings okay no warnings as you can see from chlora from the electrolytes down to the other seven analytes all are very good okay so i'll be boasting a little bit i came from i work from this laboratory okay so the reason why i have this so as you can see all your analytes are very very good no warning as you can see this is actually the mean okay the mean or the target value the target value of each laboratory as you can see we're very close to the mean that's why there are actually no deviation so meaning you are within the plus minus 2 sd okay so that's very good so going back now here to the last portion here we have here the comparator so what do you mean the com by the comparator okay we actually have different types of comparator when i say comparator kanino kanila kinokompara okay in taga in english where does the nrl compares you okay so isn't it that your external quality assurance is um technically comparing one laboratory from the other but how do they do that specifically is it through peer is it through your method is it through your reagent or what it is through your machine so as you can see here most are actually um compare your electrolytes are compared through your method so ise your ion your selective electrode and aside from that you also have your peer comparator they're comparing you from your peer technically from one laboratory to another regardless of the method or regardless of the machine or regardless of the reagent okay so as you can see there are some that are actually being compared according to peer according to methods so when i attended in a seminar of our NRL at that time, they are actually the one deciding on how, which, what comparator will be used for the for your laboratory. So most of the time, so most of the time the comparator actually depends on the type, actually depends on the number of those who are enrolled. So technically, diba, we're talking about statistics, so we have to also include statistical validity or the um the significance of the sample size aside from aside from that okay so things to remember whether it is your internal qc or your external qc and even your patient sample you run them in the same manner okay and the only difference is the sample so i'll be showing you some videos from the preparation i'll be muting the i'll be giving the links down below in the description box but I will also be showing it to you right now. So from this one are the video for the preparation of your QC material, for the entering of your QC samples, and for the interpretation of your results. I opted to give this so that you will be, ha be having a visual, um, a more visual um, learning on how do we run this. But mind you, you will also be doing this once we get back in our Trinity University of Asia after the lockdown has been lifted. So please watch this video and I hope you will be learning something. I'll be actually on the background. So here.
I actually grabbed the video from Randox. So big thanks and shout out to Randox. So here it is. We have different parts for safe handling. Remember to put on your lab coat. Remember to put on gloves because the sample should be handled as if it were a true patient. Ensure that you store the sample according to the manufacturer's instructions for use. Set the pipette to the desired volume. Pipettes have two points of resistance, the first point and the second point. Push the pipette to the first point of resistance. Place the tip just below the level of the water. Slowly release the plunger until all the water is drawn. So I'll pause a bit. So it's very important your pipetting techniques, okay? So it's very important. Ensure you label the vial with the date of reconstitution. Place the vial on a ruler at room temperature for 30 minutes to ensure homogeneity. Finally, add the sample to a sample cup and run it on your analyzer. Okay, so that is it for your for your QC. So what's gonna happen? Take for example, after you prepared now your sample, how are you gonna enter? Your sample into your I always enjoyed into your machine. My science so, okay, somebody is interrupting. Um, so I so how are we going? So how are we going to how are we going to enter that into your machine? So I'll be showing you another video. So just listen. So this is actually the very same interface that we are having in your biosystem A15. So adding new samples and reagents during running. So this is what's happening. Okay, so there is no um, explanation accompanied by this video. So tech, I just want you to look at this one. So this one, this are these are actually different symbols. So as you can see, this is a blank. I'll be explaining blank when we reach your spectrophotometry in clinical chemistry. And this is actually your calibrator. So this is how your calibrator looks like. And this is actually the icon for your patient. Okay? This is the icon for your patient. So let's proceed. So what's happening is that um, this is the machine is already running and you wanted to add your samples. Take for example your QC samples. Man, you want to run your QC samples and your your other samples. So you, so you click that and then you check whatever sample you want to add. So as you can see, it can either be a blank, okay? It can either be a blank, a calibrator, a control. Okay, this is how your control looks like. Stat if you want to prioritize a particular sample, and if you're just running a normal sample, just click the smiling face, okay? So moving on, so take for example, he wanted to run your control. So you will check, click the test and then you proceed. So you have your uh, one and two. So you have your abnormal and your normal control. And then what you're going to do next is to 
run another test. Take for example, you're entering a stat test. Okay. So you also run that. So you click proceed. And then, so patient number, so usually, yan. so you accept that. So as you can see, most of the, the wordings here are actually Spanish because we are ha having a Spanish provider. So this is how it looks like. So you're going to possession now. You will possession your samples. Okay. So we'll start to possession your samples. So whether it is a calibrator. So it's also very important for you to to put them in their proper places. Oh, diba? That inilulugar mo lahat. <laughs> okay. And then you accept that afterwards it's now all entered. So afterwards you continue your running and then you will now proceed. So the orange one meaning it's running already. The yellow is that it is already entered. If it is finished, it actually will be colored green. Okay? It will actually be colored green. So much about that. Ayan. So what's going to happen afterwards now is the... Take for example, you already have your results. So what will happen next? Okay? So what will happen if you already have your results? You can actually be interpreting now. You can actually be interpreting now your sample. So quality control review and patient results search. Okay, so I'll be showing to you it. Actually, I um this is actually the very same machine I used when I was working in the clinical chemistry. So, I I paused the video. So this is actually where you can. This is okay. Follow my cursor. So this is my cursor. So this is the one you click when you're entering a new samples okay and this is the one you you click when you are checking for your results but take for example you already you are actually gonna check for the results from the previous days or your qc results from the previous day so you're gonna check click the historical report click on your qc and you will now be seeing the what what you're going to see now are your qc um qc values so you can see here you have your QC values here now. Okay? So you can actually check for the LJ charge. So as you can see this is for your control number 1. You have here your mean, your 1, SD2, SD3, SD and you see now that your QC values are plotted along it. So um I hope by merely looking at this one you're actually seeing some of the violations. But to tell you the the rejection con the, the rejection criteria that they set for this is your 3SD. So, technically, that is 1-3SD. 1-3S. Okay. So, moving on now. Ayan. So, this is how you review it. Okay. So, you can edit that. Ayan. So, technically, your statistics. And you can actually check. Okay. Look at that. The run re rejection criteria. So, you can check it and you can um double check now your qc so you have here your average so this is a printed one so monthly actually we print your qc charts so that when the doh came when the doh comes you will be having your qc reports again so the value you took the average out of that the sd as well can print that out so if we're gonna check for patient history results so you have that Ayan. you go to history you have here the serial numbers for your patient okay you can check whether or what type of samples you want to look for so this time they're looking for the urine sample of patient number 29 Ayan. and you will you can see it there okay so that is ha actually how you you do your your QC. Again, I'll be giving the link below, okay, below the description box. So I'll be cutting the video for a min for the meantime. So I'll be cutting it from c clinical chemistry and hematology. So if you have any questions, so please send me a message. But I will be going live tomorrow mo tomorrow evening. I will be going live in your Facebook group to entertain some of your questions so please stand by for the schedule in your f facebook group so 
for now that would be all and i'll be seeing you on our next video so please take care don't forget to pray and smile that would be all this is serge omar and i'll be seeing you later on goodbye